Good morning, honorable minister, honorable guests, and fellow colleagues in the IT industry. Thank you for coming to this conference. Before I get started, I'd like to share uh, a few views. I'm very excited because very honored and humble to get this Global IT Award, which is very prestigious. I accept it because I've been working with so many good team members all this time, 10 years at Intel, 31 years at Synopsys. And maybe even more special is I've been working with thousands of Armenian engineers for this time. So really, uh, this award I accept in the name of all my team members. So thank you, first of all, thank you so much for that. Second of all is I think there is no other time that I'm so excited about uh, the IT industry, about the business and the technology. So i like to share that with you during this time. And before I get started, I want to congratulate the organizer. It's a great conference starting a conference in the uh, Mataradaran, where knowledge is here, all these centuries of knowledge. And again, we're looking forward about AI, and it's so appropriate, and it's so inspiring. So thank you for choosing a beautiful place and a beautiful depository of knowledge, which is what IT is all about. Thank you. So, so I'd like to get started by saying, um, what I'd like to do is, my title is Thriving in a Changing Environment. I know you already know change, but I want to show you my own perspective of what is actually changing. Of course, we all know. Actually, I heard the minister talk about all the changes, you know, the Silicon Mountain, inspiring words. Um, but I think the key word is thriving. How do you thrive in a changing environment? And I think those are the three words that I remember from this uh, presentation. It might take 30 minutes. I would say change, thrive, and the third word is in order to thrive, the most important word turned out to be trust. If you trust the right person, the right team, you can get thrive to um, change. So let me spend 30, 40 minutes talking to you and try to prove that point. So. So, I'll get started. First of all, I don't have to tell you, big climate changes just finished in Glasgow. I would say there, the world has changed significantly. The three major changes that I think that is concerning, and I'll talk about the world and then the technology, and then I'll go back to synopsis. The one is, many company changes from COVID-19 are now permanent. I think the word that's permanent is change. Don't, I think the way we work together yet is not yet defined. The world will not, you know, I, I think that the way we travel after September 11 is completely changed. You know, before September 11, I go to a plane, and if the door is not closing, I think I wasted my time. I got there too early. Now I go to the airport three hours ahead of time. So this is important because I think nobody knows how work is going to change, and this will affect Armenia. Because all of a sudden, people working in hybrid team, and people don't understand how to work in hybrid teams yet. So I think it's 10 times and maybe 100 times more important than the changes in September 11 for um, the COVID chain. So to me, that is one of the change. People think we'll go back to the same way. We won't go back to the same way to work. The second one is supply chain. It's hitting the global globe. Of course, you know all the container in America, you know all about the automotive not being there. But actually, I will go deeper into this. One of the biggest problems in supply chain is all the geopolitical issue in the world. We are a very global network. And when you start to have all these geopolitical issue, which our ministers are expert on, you see the supply chain getting less efficient. I like to point that out. And then, of course, the climate change. Okay, this is affecting all of us. I would say that I have not traveled for 18 months. I'm a four million mile flyer on United before. All of a sudden, 18 months, I did not fly. Very depressing. But even more depressing is many of the months I cannot walk out of my house because of the fire in San Francisco, right? So it's very real. I would say the first time I got on a plane in 18 months is come to Yarrow Van. So thank you for inviting me. I was very happy to be here. 
So I think if you look at all the changes in all the IoT and everything, change is the only constant. And technology, IIT technology, is powering all the different changes. And I would like to point out, actually, one of the problems here is there are some fundamental changes going on, including digital currency. And I'm very happy to see that there are finance, digital finance here. And maybe the, the reason, so happy to see so government here, and so I think technology is changing so fast that the laws and the social aspect of how to use it are not changing fast, are not, I wouldn't say changing fast, are not changing at the same speed because we're human beings. We don't go at the speed of gigahertz. So you can see Facebook having a lot of issues in America. You know, this is social media, it's not, but they say, what are the laws? Where are the rules? Where are the right way to do it? So I will continue on these changes, which I think is gonna be very important for all of us. First of all, if you drive on semiconductor, and again, I know that there are many different professionals here, but I'm very semiconductor rooted because of Intel, NEC, and Synopsis. In the 1960s, it was driven by compute when PC come out. Then it's totally driven by the internet. Then it's driven by smartphone. But what's driving this future now is AI, is automotive, is 5G, and security. Of course, we already, there are a lot of experts on this area. So all I wanted to do is show you my perspective of how, how I think about these problems, okay? AI, I think AI is fundamentally changing the world. And the one thing to think about AI, automotive, 5G, the common word is data. You know, automotive generate a lot of data, AI need a lot of data, right? 5G transport a lot of data. And so I think the most important thing is AI will touch not only on the top left, the semiconductor, but every single uh, aspect. And in fact, I think that one of the most fundamental change is going to be on the bottom, on the financial services. Because digital currency, you, and I'm not just talking about Bitcoin, because Bitcoin was the driver for many, many of the, of the semiconductor growth. But countries and social society, in terms of how they organize and trust the digital currency, and so, not all the rules are yet done, either internationally or not. So I think that is going to be a very important part of uh, our examination here. Automotive, there's just a lot of changes in automotive, a lot of opportunity. But I think where we really want to show you in automotive is the value of an automotive is really shifting to semiconductor and shifting to software. Okay, if you look at how many lines of software in a car, there are millions of them are high end. By the way, I don't really believe that data. I think nobody knows. They don't know how many lines are. When I go to the automotive and say, how many lines of software, they don't know. Because they know how much is in the con engine control, but maybe of the tire, maybe of all those engines. So I think semiconductor and all these other things would be very important for automotive. But one thing you should know, because we are all facing a supply chain issue, right? How did that happen? Let me just give a very simple example. In the automotive hardware supply chain, this is the picture that is usually drawn. You have tier ones, you have the, o, the, the car manufacturer is called the OEM, right? The BMW, the Honda, Toyota. They have tier one supplier and tier two supplier, right? Tier one supplier like transmission and then get on, and tier two supply to all these. Two things you can point out. The semiconductor companies are not in the tier one supplier. The tier one supplier are the Continental, the Bosch, all those Toyota Denso. So now when they don't have the parts, those, those cars can ship. So why, why isn't that semiconductor a key in the supply chain? So I think that will change because they don't see that as a uh, key one yet. There's another point to point out. In the, semicon in the automotive industry and the aerospace industry, whenever something is wrong, every part of the spark plug has a number. You know who manufactured, you know who did it, and you know how to go back to it. I want to share with you a very a different picture of the software side. In the software side, you can see that, okay, you have a system that's developed, you have a component, but you have open source and third party, and then your own engineer. 
if you have a hundred million lines of code, something is wrong. How do you know which line come from where? I think many of those you can see. I'm trying to point out a supply chain issue. In the aerospace and automotive, when something is wrong, you know how to fix it. You know where to go back. But I think many of people don't know where the source of software is. I think this is a major problem. I think uh, I was talking to the commerce department earlier. It's trying to understand why the semi automotive company don't have enough hardware parts. And so there are a lot of discussion which I can share. But I said there's another big problem. All the automotive company thinks that there's a, a short supply of hardware, but they think that there's an infinite supply of software. Just think, that is not true. There is not an infinite supply of trusted software, right? There's an infinite supply of bad software. You can get any software you want. But reliable, trusted software, there are very few. I'm trying to point out where Armenia can really help, right? Reliability, trusted software. These are not things that are, are commodity. These are, these are really treasure and valuable pieces of IP. Just like when Synopsys started our IP group, when you have a trusted piece of USB design, when you have a trusted, it has value. Everybody can design a USB. Everybody, because it's an open standard. But to be trusted is different. So I just want to show how, I, I, because I'm trying to draw, I already told you my conclusion, is that Armenia is in a very good place, but you have to take advantage of it, okay? Because the supply chain is changing. And just so that you can see, in a piece of software, you know, you now know that nobody designs a chip from scratch. They buy an IP, a USB, a memory interface from Synopsys, they design a the CPU from ARM. Guess what? Nobody designs software from scratch. Nobody. 10 million lines of code, nobody write 10 million lines of code. Where do they come from? They come from proprietary code, open source, and API. But you know, the open source is maybe 60% in many cases. So I hope you can see why there could be a lot of problem. But as IT engineers, when there are problems, there are a lot of opportunity. <laughs> They're going to need a lot of help from all of you in terms of secure, trusted software out there, even though it's open source. A lot of people use it. And these open source are in cars. You know, when we say there are 10 million lines of code in the car, car maybe 6 million are open source. How do they work? So I... I as a business person and an IT professor, I'm very excited. There are a lot of opportunity uh, for, for this. I also like to talk about supply chain and I'll share with you a little uh, thinking. Because right now, US, China, Europe, Korea, uh, EU, Russia, I mean, a lot of geopolitical going on. And semiconductor in the last 50, 60 years is a very global industry and very tightly coupled. You know, a design, when you get a cell phone design chip in Cupertino, that chip travel to the Pacific and the Atlantic and back in design maybe, maybe two or 3,000 times, right? But once you have this inefficiency of maybe some parts not being shipped, what will happen? It will change from a tightly coupled system to a loosely coupled system. But we know what that means. A tightly coupled system, loosely coupled, means you're trading off efficiency for, re for basically redundancy, right? And in hardware terms, you know, hardware engineer here and software engineer here know that a tightly coupled system, for example, I'm a microprocessor architecture, you know, a tightly coupled system can have a main memory. A loosely coupled system can have cache memory. So that creates different issue of you know, coherence, uh, re resilience, et cetera, et cetera, right? And also in software, how you actually talk to each other, how do you call the functions, et cetera. So hopefully I can mention that these are very critical, important area in changes, not only in the world of driving AI, driving automotive, driving supply chain. So I'd like to talk a little bit about synopsis side. Okay, and show you how we are trying to address the thing. We today are about 16,000 people, about, we will leave this year four, 4 billion. So just like you, we've been in COVID for about 18 months. So during these 18 months, I heard the minister talk about adapting, 
right? Because adaptability, and you talk about adaptability. During these 18 months, we we'll hired 3,000 employees, right? A, a thousand had left, and we hired a thousand, and we grew with three. They had never been to synopsis office. Right, because they can't. They, so we have not been able to integrate and everything. But we work extremely well together. So I think this is still continue to be a huge change going on uh, at Synopsis, how we're gonna work in a very hybrid uh, fashion. I wanna talk about semiconductor, just to see this is a, um, if your technology is to get you uh, really excited and glowing, you know, at 90 nanometer down in 2003, the way we draw this is just the number of year and the number of design coming up, because Synopsis has the number one position in design. So we see a lot of, of design, and then when we get to 500, we just stop tracking. So you can see the 95, 65, and 45. You know, these, these were regular marching mode from 2003 to almost uh, 2008. There was a little bit of a gap there because you can see the 2008 financial crisis, okay, in terms of design. But then you keep drawing down, and you now see the, today the industry favorite is still at 28 nanometer. That is where the workhorse of the majority of the uh, 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 manufacturing is. And then, of course, they created something called FinFET, okay, which is trying to control all the leakage current. And that is the 16 and 14 and 12. And then after that, there are not that many foundries that can go after. Global foundries not going after 12. You know, to go down there, you have Intel trying, you have TSMC and Samsung supplying, and that is the uh, world of basically five and three nanometer. So, you know, Yervan and people are et cetera, uh, expert, but it's exciting when you get to three nanometer and with two nanometer, because a silicon atom is 0.2. There are only five atoms in one nanometer. <laughs> you know, the diameter. So you can only have so many you can only have so many things to control this thing, right? And, but of course, every time you put a little bit of silicon, you build up a big thing. So you have silicon mountain. There's a lot of silicon in that mountain. <laughs> but each one is like 1.2 nanometer. So very exciting. We're still going. But the industry probably will have to regroup and resplit. And therefore, you have to go back as kind of IT professional. We look back and look at... What is the supply chain? What is the supply chain going to do? Who needs the two nanometer? How many people are going to chase that? What is the cost of that, right? And so, of course, it's very much synopsis business with a leader in the high end there, okay. And now there are many other uh, things going. So we we'll, we can talk a lot on this, but this is very very exciting. At the end there, they are basically almost like instead of uh, silicon, it's almost like basically silicon wire because. Um, Samsung has called what's called gate all around. So it's basically gate surrounding it and just a silicon. So almost called silicon wire. And then other people are doing silicon sheets. But, you know, I, I still have a lot to learn. It's just very exciting times. But I do want to say one thing. Hopefully you kind of see one of my passion is security, right? I, we started the synopsis in the EDA uh, business and then the IP business, but we're also now the leader in the software uh, security business. I mentioned that because I think there's another opportunity for uh, Armenia here. So uh, let me tell you a little bit. I think semiconductor engineer cannot get out of the idea of security. Okay, security is not one of software, firewall issue. Traditionally, you look at the network and the software. But now you've got to look at the processor, the security IP, and all the IoT side. Okay, and Security is another big issue is because of 5G, where are the data so much by the time you collect it? Where should the security be checked? So, for example, an example of synopsis is we have the software on top, in the center is our IP, surrounding is all of our EDA software, but we have security process in every single one of this. And so, I'd like to kind of share with you a little bit more thoughts on this security side, because I think um, it's, it's actually very, very, very important. Okay, so introduce to you a little bit about uh, application security. This is called, a, in the software world, it's called a magic quadrant. Okay, there's a two by two matrix. Uh, on the bottom is really uh, how good your vision is. 
on the top, on the vertical side, is how good your product is. So, you know, if you are if if you are on the lower right hand corner, the lower right hand corner, you you don't have a lot of product, but you very good vision, so you're visionary, right? If you're on the upper left hand corner, you don't have a complete strategy, but you have a lot of very good product. So basically, you are called uh, in that case a challenger. And if you're on the upper right hand corner, it's called a leadership quadrant. And I'm very happy to tell you synopsis being on the upper right and on the top for the last four or five years as a leader in this area. And one reason I want to tell you this, not just because now I think there's an opportunity for, for um, Armenia in the software, in the security uh, area. I love the idea that you have digital finance and uh, area because when you look at the ecosystem, okay, you can see that we have all the top uh, basically, most of the top aerospace defense, uh, some of the top global brand and semiconductor and the in, uh, integrated service provider. But we really, in America, 16 of the top 20 commercial banks has our customer now because of software. Okay, so we are now very, because there's a lot of software in the, in the, in the bank, right? So you have to check where those software are and where those open sources and uh, where the number one analysis is open source. But there are many, many, many more te technology uh, to be had. So the reason I picked this picture to you is because I'll summarize later. Armenia's chances of changes is because the, the ecosystem is changing, right? Remember, from a tightly coupled system to a loosely coupled system. So when a, when, a, when a country like Armenia, when you are coming up in new technology and the existing system is changing, you have a chance. If the existing system doesn't change, you have no chance because the supplier is a supplier. They are tightly coupled. You know, GM will only buy from this guy. Ford will only buy from this guy. They've been buying for 100 years. They're not going to change, right? But when it changes to a loosely coupled system, there's a chance for you and for me if we write the right partner. That's why I use the word trust. I think trust is still actually the key uh, term for all of these. So before I end, I just say very happy uh, for this award and that we have been working in um, uh, Armenia. I, I use this not to show you what we have done, but to tell you because I'm so honored to have an uh, Armenian GIT award to say using uh, IT to service humanity, right? So I want to give you the history of Synopsis, the last 17 years that we've been here, right? We built a lot of foundation, just like you did. But the first five years, we were really trying to install, to catch up, because I think our engineers were very good in math, very good in science, but it was not very modern in the design. But not only that, there was a lot of business practice, there was a lot of communication tool in terms of how to do it. So I think in the first five years, we established how to work in a, in a very good fashion. The, lot, the second five years, this team was able to do very good project independently. But you know, Armenia team for us in the last five years, the, the third five year term of fifth year, is leading many projects throughout the world. You know, they have been filing uh, 30 patents, looking at 600 papers. Remember all the uh, technology that I show you in, you know, from 90 nanometer up to uh, 3 nanometer. Our teams are working on those things over here. Right? So they are leading, they are no So why am I so excited? If you think about that, what would the next five years look like? Right? It's not going to be the same. There are more opportunity. You know, they are, we have a team that's leading. And same for all the other society, the other IT professional over here. So to me, the, exci the exciting thing is I think, you know, uh, we are going to commit to stay in Armenia. We, as, a, as an IT laureate, thank you. I think I have a lot of work to do. The past is the past. <laughs> There's a lot more work to do. We're happy that we have planted many, many trees, and we will continue to plant a lot of trees. Um, and so I'll end by saying, and just like you, uh, I think I heard actually the same talk about Silicon Mountain, Silicon Valley is no longer just Silicon, right? Even though I grew up in Silicon Valley. In the 1930s of HP, 
I grew up at Intel. Intel started in 1968, right? Then you started with Oracle, Symantec, Yahoo. Then you got to Google, and even Google looked like an old company. Now you have Tesla, you have Airbnb, and you, you just keep going. I mean, and one of the reason all these could be there is not is the concentration of uh, people taking risk and looking at the opportunity and seeing forward what could come about, right? So. I think that's one of the key. The technology, we can see the uh, AI and all those, but how do you thrive in this um, changing environment, right? And sometimes we individually can see everything, but the ecosystem sees it. You know, a, a, a society and a whole uh, thing will be very smart how they move. So you got to build the right trust with that. So I think I'll end by but I'll end by this next two forum Be because I'm so happy to get this award. Remember, when we are uh, when we are IT professional, we're building IT system, but we are trying to uh, service humanity and we're trying to service the um, environment, right? And you hear us a lot when we say we want to build secure, reliable, and safe system. Well, one way to think about this is security protects the system and environment from the human, right? That's what security is. Reliability protects basically the human and the IT system from the environment because of temperature, wear, flooding, etc. But the most important thing for IT professional we keep thinking of is safety, right? Because safety to, uh, protects humanity from our own system and our own environment. So. I hope as you think about these words of security, reliability, and safety, you can see the word safety, the word trust come back, right? How do you know you're safe? You know, trust is a very major part of this whole equation. So I will leave the talk by this, hopefully the, um, in a very broad way, I've shared my perspective is one, we can thrive in a changing environment because the environment is changing it creates new opportunity. Second is, however, we, there will be new ecosystem and we need to rebuild, we need to build trust, right? So you want change, you want thrive, but the one connecting is trust. I think Armenia is a unique opportunity really to grasp this change. And the reason is because, just look at COVID-19. People are no longer working as a group in one room. They, this is a landlocked group of very large talent and there are pipes to everywhere. How we work is not the traditional internet, just to Zoom connection. We have to think how to use this talent to be able to get to there. And then what is the number one thing that you're, pro what's the value you're providing, right? Trust is one thing. If there's a lot of trust that these, these software, these hardware are reliable, I think the value being ripped by Armenia will be very big. I think you have a chance to grab it. This opportunity won't last very long, but it's not a short window. It's a number of years. It's two, three years. It's not 30 years. It's not two, three weeks, you know? So figuring out this, I committed to keep working with you. I'm very excited about the opportunity. I uh, always enjoy coming here. And again, thank you for choosing a place of knowledge for, for the speaking. Thank you.